the love of God. You see, it's greater far than any tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes far beyond the highest star, and it reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave His Son to win. His erring child He reconciled and pardoned from His sin. It's so measureless, and it's so strong, and it shall forevermore, evermore endure. It's the same sand angel. I can talk about the love of God today, and I know what it means. But there was a time when my life was meaningless. There was a time when there was no purpose. A time when I didn't live; I only existed. At a very young age, I left home, my home in Columbia, Kentucky. And within a few months after I had left, my life was wrapped up, entangled in drugs and drinking. I left home with the intentions of finding if anything in this life was real. I had been raised in church. I had been in church three or four times a week most of my life, but I never knew that God was real. I didn't know if there was a God, and I didn't know if there wasn't. But when I left my home, I threw behind me anything to do with church or God, and I classed it all as religion. I spent years of my life singing in nightclubs and bars to make money. To support my drug habit, I lived my nights in bars, looking in people for happiness and truth, but I couldn't find it there. I traveled from town to town and from coast to coast, working various jobs, searching for an answer to what life. Is really all about. I said to myself, if I can just find love, I know that I'll find my answer. But you know, I didn't find love in people, in friends. I didn't find love in experiences or jobs. I didn't find it in church, as far as a building. I didn't find it in any class of people. I worked various jobs, 
all kinds of jobs and I live with all kinds of people. I would hitchhike the roads by myself in the late hours of the night and ask myself, why was I born and what is the purpose of living? I studied several religions, but it always left me vacant. I listened to a lot of people talk about what happiness was, and yet I never could find that happiness for myself. I figured if there was a God, he was too good to love someone like me. My life became bound by drugs. Everything that I made financially went to buy drugs to support my habit to keep me well. I was at a lot of parties and around a lot of people. And yet I was still lonely and I was still empty and vacant inside. I sang songs of truth and freedom, and yet I didn't know truth, and I needed freedom. I thought freedom would come if I could be physically free to go anywhere I wanted or do anything I chose. But the more I did, the more bound I became by sin, and I didn't even know the meaning of the word sin. But you know, sin is anything that separates you from God. It's not any one thing. It's not just a certain rule or regulation that you don't follow or that you do follow. But sin is anything that'll keep you from communicating with God. And the more I tried to find freedom, the more my life became entangled in the clutches of sin. I was in a cottage up in the Rocky Mountains one day, and I overdosed. My friends that were with me, they thought I was dying. I thought I was dying. At that time, I was 20 years old, and my body was sick from the misuse and abuse of drugs. My mind was burned mentally. I was a wreck. I had no memory. I couldn't carry a conversation. I couldn't think clearly from the overuse of drugs. Searching, lonely, in that cottage that day, I did too many drugs. It was enough to kill a person, but God miraculously brought me out of that overdose. But while I laid there in that cottage floor, sick, thinking I was dying, my friends injected me with salt water to revive me. And when that didn't revive me and they thought me dead, they left the cottage in fear. And I laid in that cottage for hours alone, just myself, to think my thoughts, to face my life, my past and my future and my friend i didn't know if there was a god or if there wasn't i laid in that floor and i said to myself what has my life been and why was i born and what's the purpose of life i said are people born just to go to school and to get married and to have jobs and then they die and that's all there is to life. Some are drug addicts, some are wealthy, some are poverty stricken. But not knowing that God had plans for my life and that he was going to allow me to live. I existed in those moments in the epitome of loneliness and desperation. You see, I was once a lonely woman Searching for a friend Bound in chains of life's confusion Will it ever end? 
I wondered if life would end this way, if real love could ever be love affair after love affair, longing to be free. One day I traveled from San Francisco back to my daddy's farm in Kentucky. I took a supply of drugs with me, but I used that supply of drugs in record time. With no drugs and no friends, I had nowhere else to go. I went out to the woods on daddy's farm, rejected by life, misunderstood and misunderstanding what life was meant to be, desperate inside. I had shamed my family. I had disgraced friends. There was nothing good about my life. I had stolen. I had misused people. I had done everything that a woman could do that was considered bad. And yet all the time inside, there was a search. There was a desire to know what life was really meant to be. There was a desire to know my creator if there was one. There was a desire to know real love, not the love of flesh, not the love of friends. That's a good love, but it doesn't fulfill the emptiness inside the soul. But that day out in the woods, I walked out there alone. I was on my way to New York very shortly to catch a boat to go to another country. And I knew that I would die, either in that other country, I knew that I would die from my health, or that I would end up overdosing and dying eventually. And I knew that the life that I lived was a sure road of death, and yet I didn't know what to do about it. So out in the woods that day, I opened up my heart, not knowing if God was real. I didn't think he was. I didn't think he wasn't. But I'll tell you, I didn't want to live any longer, and yet I didn't want to die. I didn't want to eat, and I didn't want to not eat. I didn't want to go to sleep at night because my sleep was restless, and yet I didn't care if I went to sleep and never woke up. I was so tired of traveling the roads, and I was so sick of drugs. I was so confused with life, and I was so torn by the games that people played around me. I was so disillusioned with what life was supposed to be about, and I didn't know where to turn. But I opened my heart in the woods that day. And I said, I don't know what's real. And I don't know if anything's real. And I said, I know if there is anything anywhere that can hear me, then I know you must be love. I know you must care if you hear me. But you know, in my heart, I didn't think that there was anything there. But I opened, as I opened my heart, I said, if there is a God anywhere, if there is something real anywhere, I said, I need happiness. I said, I need truth. I said, I'll take anything, anywhere that anybody has for me, if it's real. And you know, out in the woods of Kentucky that day, a man met me there. 
His name was Jesus. He came to me and he said, Charlotte, he said, if you'll drink of this water, he said, you'll never thirst again. He said, I have the water that you need. He said, what I have is living water. You know, a drop of blood from Calvary came right into those woods that had been shed nearly 2,000 years but were still real. A drop of that blood came right there and dripped on my unclean heart. And it moved back everything that I had ever done. Something inside me was transformed and life became new. Something inside me turned over and I knew that I would never have to drink again. Something inside me turned over and I knew that I would never have to buy another drug. I knew I would never have to do another pill or shoot another needle in my veins. I knew I would never have to travel the roads in search of truth because I knew that this that I had found was real. I couldn't even explain it. I didn't even know what it was, but I knew it was God. I knew that it was truth, and I knew it would never leave me. Out in the woods, I sat there on the ground that day for hours and wept. I laid my body on the ground and wept in gratitude that Jesus Christ was really real, that he had really come to me, that he could really give me life, that he really was hope, that there was really something truthful in this life, that there didn't have to be games played, and that people could be real, and that it was more than going to church. I found out in the woods that day when Jesus Christ met me there, I found out that he was a lot more than a preacher preaching a sermon. I found out that he was so much more than a church building with a name over the door. I found out that it has nothing to do with the physical building, with the material building. I found out that what he is, is a living Savior that can come right inside your life and transform you and make you complete. And as I share these words with you today, as you listen to what I have to say, I want you to know, whoever you are, that Jesus Christ is real and that he loves you. He cared so much for you that he gave his life for you and he can meet you right there where you are. He'll touch you right now while you're listening. He'll put his spirit right over you and he will bathe you in his love if you're receiving. You know, I could tell a lot more things. I could talk about a lot of experiences in my life, but there's something that I can talk about that's greater than any story of my past. This is my story that I'll tell the rest of my life. Listen. Blessed assurance. You see, Jesus is mine. Oh, was a foretaste of glory divine. My friend, I'm an heir of salvation. You see, I'm purchased of God. I've been born of His Spirit. Will you receive Him and be washed in His blood? This is my story. song, young people, here it is, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, oh, this is my song, praising my Savior. 